still do something here. Uh, I'm going to tell the church to get their foot back. Uh, and I want to speak to the church of folk. Amen. I want to speak to the, to the gospel folk. Amen. I want to go tell them I'm about you. Amen. Let the church stand. We're about to go into our scripture meeting. It's our custom to stand for the scripture meeting. That's what I was intending to do before we had with Evangelist Aaron to call the Holy Ghost part. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We certainly do praise God. Just turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 27. Amen. I don't want to say I won't be before you long. Amen. I'm going to use some bad English. This thing gets gooder and gooder. Better and better. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank God for the taste being in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you have to say amen, and we just want to read one verse. Verse 31, read it together. What does it say? Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except ye abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Let us read it again. Amen. Let us read it one more time. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except you abide in the ship, he cannot be saved. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you anoint our minds and anoint these thy great people in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is good to be back out in the house of the Lord one more time. Thank you, Lord. And I can truly say I was glad when you said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And our scripture text for today, coming out of the book of Acts, chapter 27 and verse 31, says, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except ye abide, except these abide in the ship. Abide means to remain. Remain on the ship. Or abide in the ship. Ye cannot be Say. We see here at this particular juncture in our scriptures, Paul has taken on a journey. Paul was an avid traveler, amen, being an evangelist and being an apostle and also being a pastor. Most of all, he was a witness for Jesus Christ. And if we were to read the 26th chapter, we would see what the trouble was that Paul had gotten himself into. You see, Paul was called into question because he was preaching and teaching the Lord's Savior, Jesus Christ. So eventually, where he was beaten and thrown into prison. And they would have killed him, but Paul was visited by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and Paul, Jesus told Paul, be of good cheer. Amen. They're not going to put you to death for as you have been a witness unto me in Jerusalem, you must be a witness unto me in Rome. Hallelujah. So that's where they were taking Paul on this particular journey, 
to Rome. She was taking him to Rome to testify of Jesus Christ. And before they had gotten started on their particular journey, thank you, Lord, they were met up in the seas by various storms. Amen? By various storms as they had taken out on their journey. And when I begin to study the scriptures, I'm inclined to say that they had began this particular journey probably in the mid-summer range. Hallelujah. And before they had actually sailed toward Rome, it had entered into fall. And the reason why I say that is because they had gone from spot to spot when you read the scriptures before they actually uh, set sail to Rome that Paul begins to tell them, he said, hey brethren, uh, me being an active traveler, I don't believe that you should take this journey now. Hallelujah. Because I feel in my spirit that there's going to be much hurt, much harm if you leave now. Oh Hallelujah. But they, the centurion, much wanting to believe the captain of the ship, they sail anyhow, not uh, paying attention to what Paul has said. My God, I'm going somewhere. Y'all just go with me. Thank you, Lord. They didn't pay attention to what the man of God was saying, so they, they essentially went their own way with Paul on board. Paul understood that it was hurricane season. Um, it was a season of hurricanes that were about to take place. Um, it didn't come to a rocket science to feel that out. Paul wasn't prophesying that something bad was going to happen. He just realized what season it was and that we should pay attention to the season. How many of my brothers and sisters, we ought to pay attention to what season it is. We ought to pay attention to what time it is. How many of you, because God will bless you in your two seasons. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And as they begin to set sail, as they begin to go against the wind and the waves, various storms begin to happen. Hallelujah. That's a, a key to us that various storms come into our lives. When they first sailed out, there was a small storm. And then they sailed out, the storm got greater. And by the time they were into the high seas, that it turned into a hurricane. My God, God showed me. He said, Brother Quinn, tell them that there are various storms that come into your life. Hallelujah. You are inevitable to have storms that come into your life. He's telling us that we ought to have it in our mindset that we need to get ready for storms. We need to prepare ourselves for storms. Once again, I'm not prophesying to you that a storm is coming unto you, but as sure as you are living, a storm is coming. Uh, as sure as you're living, you're going to have trouble in your way. Uh, instead of having a pity party, instead of allowing it to catch you unprepared, you ought to build yourself up uh, and get yourself ready. Uh, you ought to do the things that are necessary to prepare for the storm. Come on and give God the praise. Come on and give God the praise. Hallelujah, my God. And as they were coming across this particular storm, thank you, Lord, the Bible says that the storm got worse. And the storm got worse, and they, in their own mindsets, felt like uh, that we are losing our lives. They felt at a point where all is lost and surely we are going to die. My God, you can get into a situation and it feels so helpless and hopeless that you are about to die. My God, but Paul, in this particular scripture, he opens up the word of God and we see that the scripture says that as they were losing heart, Paul got quiet on them and he went to his prayer closet. My God, when storms come and the situation seems as though it's hopeless and helpless, 
You want to open your prayer up. You want to praise before the Lord. To see what thus saith the Lord. And Paul came out of his prayer closet with a word from the Lord. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. When you come out of your prayer closet, you want to come out with a word from the Lord. You want to leave your prayer closet until the Lord equips you with the word. You want to leave your prayer closet until you come out assured of what is going on in your life. Your breath on it, sir. God, you 
crazy brothers and sisters. Uh, Paul had a destiny on his life. Uh, and we like Paul's, uh, we have a destiny upon our mind. Uh, it doesn't matter how many storms come. Uh, it doesn't matter how many winds blow. Uh, as long as God is God uh, and if God be for you, uh, we then can be against you. Uh, there is an arena. He was stripping. He was stripping. He was stripping. 
Like me, the Peter, the Jesus told Peter, I have prayed. 
You cannot be saved. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Going back to the Lord. Things may happen. Situations may come. Don't abandon the Lord. Don't abandon Jesus. Don't abandon him. Doesn't matter how hard life gets. Doesn't matter what I have to face. If I don't face it with Jesus, I won't win. If you don't face it with Jesus, you are not win. We got some really way to cover something here. The voice states are on a, a high. If you don't face it together with Jesus, you can't win. Because he's stripping. I can go through the fire. Because 